Hi, today I'm going to show you a game uh, from Yugoslavia, 1959, with the white pieces, Pal Benko. You might know him for his end game studies, um, this column on the end game in um, Chess Life magazine. <clears throat> and with the black pieces, none other than Mikhail Tao. Now, this is 1959, this is one year before Tao would become. A world championship so Tao here is at his peak so knight f3 was played f5 was played so Tao played the Dutch defense let's flip this around sorry about that knight f3 get your eyes adjusted right f5 and here Banco played g3 nothing wrong with that interesting is is d3 as uh, was played by young Magnus Carlsen against Sergei Dolmatov he won a fascinating uh, game in this line. It's like an improved Lissitz and Gambit. If you don't know what the Lissitz and Gambit is, it's um, Knight F3, F5. And then E4. But that wasn't played in this game. So Knight F3, F5, G3. Keeping things normal. Bishop G2, G6. Tau goes in for the Leningrad. C4. Bishop G7. Knight C3. Castles, castles. D6, D4. And Tau goes in for this line. Knight C6. With the direct <clears throat> intention of gaining E5. Many of the Dutch lines, of course, you would like to play E5. Um, the Dutch is, is like a cousin to the King's Indian defense. The King's Indian defense, you play, you get e5 in early, and then you strive for the move f5. In the Dutch, you get f5 in early, and then you strive to get the move e5 in. Which, you know, which is, in a nutshell, you know, really, I'm really oversimplifying it, but they are kind of um, cousins, you know, as far as opening is concerned. So, knight c6 uh, is one way. Go about it. c6. Okay, so time the queen ends up here or here and help influence the e5 push. It's queen e8 again. The idea of pushing e5. And then sometimes later on h6, g5, and then the queen will transfer, transfer over to g6 or h5. So e5 is very important in the Dutch. Knight c6. Is um, you know more straightforward and to the point, but the downside of that it leaves the um, knight vulnerable to attack. And one of the main lines is simply d5, and then the knight either goes here to a5 or it jumps into e5 where it's promptly exchanged. And that's what happens here. Benko plays d5, but Tyler choose this line, which is which is playable. And after this pawn structure is defined like this, we see this 4 to 3 majority over here for white. White usually presses his queen side advantage. The queen comes to b3. These pawns um, start going up, and black tries to get his king side attacking. And practice has shown this line to be uh, more favorable uh, for white. But back then in 1959, the theory was still developing. And still today, one of the options is knight a5. So knight a5 was played by Tal. Of course, with the direct attack on this pawn. How to defend it? Okay, b3. Of course, is a little suspicious because it opens up the diagonal for this bishop. For example, knight e4 can be tried. But even this is not a guaranteed <clears throat> way to equality or... Um, a better game for black. Even at the knight e4, this bishop is so important to black is that white can afford to try to give up the exchange here. And black still has to be um, very careful in this, this line. The other way to defend it is just simply moving the piece, queen d3, and you allow the rook to come over also. <clears throat> so 
<clears throat> one of the main things here for White is White wants to exploit this knight being here. His overall plan is to expand again, expand on the queen side here. So after uh, queen d3, black goes with this plan of c5. Of course, e5 is an, the other move, the principal move here. Play could go off D takes, on passant, bishop takes with more attack on there, and then say like B3, and then the knight can return. And black has a respectable game there. Instead, tile opted for C5. <clears throat> and there's other plans in this type of position. Is the other plan for black here is when black decides to counterattack white on the queen side, basically playing on the same side of the board. Sometimes black will go for the king side attack and white will be attacking on the other side of the board. And then sometimes black will attack on the same side of the board. So this is what makes the Dutch appealing. There's many different um, ways to... to um, to play this sometimes black plays on both sides of the board all right so c5 is played here knight g5 by banco typical positional themes in the dutch knight g5 tile plays a6 so now his plan is being revealed to hit at the center with b5 benoni style rook b8 maybe bishop d7 Right, and then b5, right, and keeping an eye on this square. Also, moving the rook off this diagonal so that in the event this is exchanged, the rook is not um, under attack. So, rook b1, okay, planning net, rook b8, now bishop d2. Again, this knight is a little shaky in that, that position. Tau plays queen e8. B5 is perfectly acceptable right here. For example, B5. Looks like he drops a pawn, but not really. C takes B5. A takes B5. And now, if Knight takes B5, C4 wins on the spot. Surprise. Right? Breaking the coordination. White would maybe opt for something like that. And knight c4. Takes. 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 With a double edge game here. Dutch is a great defense. If you want to play for a win. Right? It's black. You know? Because it's not it's not super solid. But you get, you get chances. The Dutch. That's why I like the Dutch. I played the Dutch for a long time. You get chances when you need to. You really need a win or you want to win. Maybe it's the last round. You bring that Dutch out because it's going to force the opponent to. You know to, to come after you. Bishop d2 was played and queen e8. Like I said b5 is perfectly uh, playable. Benko plays b3. Solid, but a bit passive. Again, why not b4? Attacking the chain at its base. b5. And now a3. Again, b4 was possible earlier, but he wants to do it and be able to put a pawn there. But playing this slow gives um, time to black. Knight g4. Knight drops back to f3. B takes e4. B takes e4. And rook b3. Rook takes. Knight takes. Rook b1. This is no problem because the knight has a nice square to go to. And now e3. Again, not a problem. Knight takes f3. Bishop takes f3. 95. I mean, can Tao's game be any more easier? White is just handing him the game. Queen e2. 
course, you grab the powerful bishop. And now e5, the thematic events. Queen d1, e4. Right, opening up the diagonal. Queen a4. It says no thank you on the queen trade. Queen e7. Queen c6. And f4 from Tau. Very sharp. If e takes f4, then e3. And notice that the bishop can't be, can't leave the protection of the knight. So that means that would have to be played. And then, boom, bishop takes c3. And, of course, if bishop takes c3, then check. And a good old-fashioned double attack. Okay, so this is what's behind tiles, f4. Rook b8. It seems like um, Banco was intent on playing for a draw here. Another point I want to bring out is notice how uh, Black started out early in the game um, fighting against White on the Queen side. Um, understanding that's a common theme uh, for White and the Dutch playing the Queen side. Black um, started the early portion of his game with c5 and Rook b8. Um, knight a5 and so forth um, fighting on the queen side and basically bogged white down fixed the pawn structure over there so white doesn't really have any initiative over there and then switched the attack to the queen side which is basically the heart and soul of the Dutch offense is switching the attack over to the king side but like I said play often occurs on both sides of the board and you've seen that here so what you saw early on was black is taking the time to stop white's um Penetration on the queen side, an advantage in initiative, and now he's conducting the attack over on the other side of the board. Even though white has some pressure on the queen side already, black has um, taken enough prophylactic measures to slow it down enough to where he can attack this unprotected king over here. So, after 26, rook b8, bishop h3. Rook takes. I just want to show you if. You try to play queen a8. You know, for example. Then you can just take. Queen B7. Then Queen F5, and there's no stopping this mate here. Again, the king is just totally um, left abandoned. And that's basically the crux of all the, the um, future attack in this game. So after Bishop H3, Banco opted for the quick exchange. And now he took, he takes f4, and queen b8. Banco has to be very careful, and after queen b8, he must have been hypnotized by Tao and played this move, knight e2. Now, of course, black is threatening to snatch his bishop off, because the knight is guarding this square. So... He plays knight e2, right? And he figures that, hey, after check, I can, he can blockade on this square. So that's, that's the idea. Unfortunately, after queen b1, and let's say, for example, knight c1, then queen c2, and then now this piece is attacked. Let's say queen e8. And then bishop f8. And there's really no rescuing anything. The bishop eventually has to move somewhere. Because not only is the bishop threatened. But just a simple queen uh, d1. Leading the checkmate is threatened. After, um, leading the checkmate is threatened. And Banco resigned. So good game uh, by Tal. I hope you 
enjoyed that one. Um, nice short game. And um, you know, I hope you learned some of the strategies there. Again, look how Black is playing on the queen side early in the game. Just basically counterattacking White's plans over there. And then he plays e5 and just switches it up. And now he's attacking on the other side of the board. Black is, uh, white is too slow. And then boom, Tao drops the bomb. 